heard you say recently that the Tao Te Ching was one of your idols. And that you used it to gauge where you were at on the spiritual journey. Yeah. How did you use it to gauge where you were at? I would read it and to see if I could understand it. And if I understand the depths of the teaching, I knew that something had changed in my consciousness levels. The Tao Te Ching is a guide, but it's not something that you study and learn from. You don't collect knowledge from it. It really shows you where you're at if it's your own direct experience, what they're talking about in that, what Lao Tzu was talking about in that book. And so I'd read the Tao Te Ching and see if I could understand it. And if I couldn't, I knew there was something missing, not in my intellectual knowledge, but in my direct knowing, because I don't and never have valued collected knowledge. It's a trap. You can only trust your own direct knowing, your own direct experience. Anything a teacher says is just an arrow pointing somewhere. It's not to be taken on as as a belief system. If it's taken on as a belief system, it's a trap. Only your own direct knowing is worthwhile. And so the Tao Te Ching for me was showing me holes in my knowing because there was things in there that I couldn't understand from time to time. Because if you truly are advanced in consciousness level, you will understand the Tao Te Ching. If you're not, you won't. <laughs> okay? Yes. Where did you cross-reference your understanding of it? I either knew or I didn't know. It was clear to me. If I, I didn't know, I didn't know. If it wasn't my direct experience, what he was talking about, I didn't know. One of the most dangerous things a seeker can do is collect knowledge and think they know from borrowed knowledge. It's a form of stuckness. The moment you think you know, you're lost in a lot of ways because existence can't flow through you anymore. You're stuck. It's best to be not knowing. It's best to not know. And then everything can flow through you. It's the same to that you were, you were sure, you were sure that you understood well, if it was my direct knowing, yes. But if it wasn't, I was honest enough with myself to own up to I didn't know. I didn't understand. And it was an arrow for me pointing in a direction I might need to look. Were you ever wrong with thinking you understood what you were reading and went back again to? Oh, heck yeah. I have made thousands of mistakes. It's how we learn, by making mistakes, by failures. It's how we learn. People are so devastated by failure, but why would you be devastated by failure? It's how we learn. It's how we learn to walk, by falling over and getting up and trying again. Failures are just stepping stones to success. When you wrote the Tao Te Ching, did you feel any sort of presence or energy coming through? No. So I'd read a passage of the Tao Te Ching and I'd just feel it. I wouldn't go and read another passage. I'd just stay with one passage. It took me ages to read the Tao Te Ching and I've read it, I've probably read it 20, 20 times, 30 times. But it took me ages to read because I didn't just read it for intellectual understanding. I was reading it to see what I could understand, what I could know from it in my own direct experience, not borrowed knowledge. And if it wasn't my own direct knowing through my own direct experience, I knew there was something I was missing. And so I used the Tao Te Ching as a guide and Lao Tzu as a teacher. Yes. Have there ever been any books that you've read where you felt presence through the work? Yeah, most awakened teachers, Ramana Maharshi, Papaji, 
Osho Rajneesh, Gangaji, Nisigadatta, Ramesh Bolsika, Robert Adams. I don't know. The Tao Te Ching had been translated from Chinese into English, and I'd studied a few different copies of it because the translators weren't awake. And so the, the, the translations were sometimes different and sometimes wrong. It's hard for someone who's uh, not awake to translate from one language to another language and really get the full meaning. 